Hello everyone! So today we're going to do an ooky spooky artwork in theme with Halloween which is coming up and I know some of you are really into that and you love a good Halloween celebration. So we're going to make an ooky spooky haunted house artwork. So what you're going to need is some paper, something to colour with, pencils, paints, pastels, felts or coloured pencils. So with your page you need to have it in portrait so it's nice and tall and gives you lots of room to put in your haunted house. We're going to start at the bottom of the page and you can use a pencil just to draft it out. We're going to draw in just a little bit of a hill. So you always imagine those stories that have a haunted house on top of a hill. So we're going to give it a little bit of a hill, just a bit of a lumpy line along the bottom of the page. Not too high up because we do want to leave lots of room for our haunted house. And in the middle of this line is where we're going to start to draw our haunted house. Now the cool thing about these houses is they're always really crooked. So they're wonky and that is what gives them that haunted house look. So instead of drawing a square like we would draw for a regular house, we're actually going to draw it in a funny shape, skinny at the bottom and getting wider as we go up. So we're going to draw a wonky square, skinny at the bottom and wide as we go up. Join that across here. And that is the bottom story of our house. Now we're going to add a little roof on here. So above this, we're just going to draw a line. About the same width as your house there. And then we're going to go out in a little curve shape. Like this. And this is the roof awning. And then that's going to come back and join back onto our house like that. So an artist that I love who just does amazing haunted house and creepy looking artworks is Tim Burton. You've probably seen lots of his movies. He's done Nightmare Before Christmas. He's done Frank and Weenie. He did Alice in Wonderland. He did Beetlejuice lots of cool movies. So a signature style that he uses in a lot of his drawings is the spiral. So on the end of this we're going to do a little spiral. Kind of adds to the creepiness of it. And over here we're going to do the same. So this is our bottom story. Make sure that you leave enough room to put another story up here. So make sure your bottom story doesn't fill up the whole page and then you won't have any room to do the next story on top. So we're going to add a little tower, like a bell tower or a watch tower. So we're going to draw a long skinny at the bottom and getting wider as it goes up. Tower, this is our bell tower. And we're going to put a little roof on that. So above here we do a flat line. And the same as we did this curve out to the side, we're going to do the same. So curving out to the side, curving out to the side, and then joining it on. And you can do the Tim Burton spiral. So we've got our bell tower. We might want to add a few other parts of our building and other stories. I'm going to do a really wonky one out the side. You can go crazy and have them super wonky like this and then we're going to have the same thing so our roof like this join this on and I might have another little part of the building over here so you can add as many of these on as you like you can keep adding more little towers or stories on top of your main building. You can also add extra sections onto the side. So once you've got your main structure, then you can start to build different parts onto your building. I'll put a few photos up on the side so you can see some different ideas of what other artists have done as well. So you can see 
what the variety of things that you can do to your, once you've got that main structure on, then you're just going to start building other pieces onto the building. So I'm going to build another little part here and it's going to have, here's the roof, join it back on. So this is going to be another little room here and I think I'm ready to put in some windows. So what's really cool is in your bottom story to put a really big window. And it's nice to have that big curve on the top as well. So we go up the sides and then we do a semicircle over the top and then down again. So a big curvy window and lots of little window panes. So I put those, ooh, looking good. So I'm gonna do some more of those kind of windows in here as well. So we go along the bottom straight line up the side and then we do a semicircle over the top and then we're going to add in our window panes wow it is looking great so in my bell tower i'm going to have a round window with a crisscross I'm going to put a few more of these windows in. The wonkier, the better. They don't have to be straight. Here we are. There's lots of windows. I might add a little balcony thing here. We'll just add a little roof and a little balcony. Maybe there's a window here as well. And I think that is looking pretty good. Now the other thing you can add, which looks really cool, is little railings. Like as if you had an upstairs balcony and they have the railings along the balcony. So we're going to have a little balcony here. I'm going to put one here as well. Maybe you can come out this room and there's a balcony here. I'm just going to add a few balconies and also the railing at the front of the house is very important to show where the door is. So here is my railing here at the front of the house with the, where you might go up to the house and I'm going to put the Tim Burton spiral on the end there. That is looking really cool isn't it? So other things that we can add to this are a spooky tree a moon, a cat, a bat, you can add a ghost, a Halloween pumpkin.
But I don't have a huge amount of room here, but I'm going to add a spooky tree. Now to make a spooky tree, you want it to be very kind of lots of curves and swerves and swirly bits to it. Wonky tree. So I'm going to incorporate some of these swirly, wonky, creepy shapes. into my tree like it's trying to creep up the side of the house now a tree can be a great place to put an owl as well if you want to add an owl this is where you would put an owl an owl is a really spooky thing to add to a Halloween haunted house all right, here's our tree, and it's going to be night time, so we're going to have a moon. And it's very important to um, think about what kind of moon that you want. You might want the crescent moon, you might want the round moon. So think about what kind of moon you want. I wanted a crescent moon there. And I'm going to add a few little bats into the sky as well. So to draw a bat, we're going to start off, just put the head on with two little triangles on the top then we're going to have the wings and we do the scallop underneath the wing here's the tail and then we just join on to the head so here's the head scallop and there's the tail. So we've got some bats on there. And there is a very crooked, spooky house. So we're going to paint this all in black, our house. And we're going to leave the windows because these are going to be like lights coming through the windows. So we can do inside the windows, we can do yellow, but the main house is going to be black. So let's start off with that. I actually think, change my mind, I'm going to do inside the windows with some yellow first, as if there's someone home and the lights are in the windows. Okay, and onto the black. We're not going to worry about this line here, we're just going to fill that in. It's a silhouette. So we don't need to keep all those details, we're just seeing the main shapes. We're going to do our moon in black as well. And our bats. Here is our creepy tree. And we're also going to do our hill in black as well. Fantastic. Here we are, that is all silhouetted and looking fabulous. So in behind our creepy castle, we're going to do like a sunset. So this is where you can add some pinks, purples, yellows, oranges, blues. So pick maybe three colors to just sort of blend into the background. I'm gonna go with some orange. So we just want to create a sunset look. So I'm going to go with oranges and yellows. And you probably want to use a bigger brush for this. So you can just kind of create swirls and patterns in the background. It's a good idea probably to wait for this to dry as well before you start putting in your background colour. But I'm just going to actually make a start anyway with that. Now if you have dye, this would be really nice to use dye in the background. Dye and crayons or pastels would be perfect for the background of this.
I might get a smaller brush for the more detailed areas so I can get in nice and close. Now the other way to do it would be to just paint your sunset background first, then wait for that to dry, and then once that's dry, you can put on your black over the top. But if you're wanting to do it in just more one session, then you might want to start with the castle first. Depends how much time you've got. If you've got time to wait, or you could use a hairdryer to dry out your background before you get on to doing the other part. So up to you how, which order you want to do it. You can just do your whole page painted sunset first, dry it, and then do the black silhouetted haunted house over the top. Or you can do it the way that um, I've done it here. So it's up to you. Don't forget to go in between your banisters here. Put the sunset in there. Now I'm just going around with my small brush and just tidying up these edges that my big brush couldn't get to. And then swirling out some of that paint and giving some nice blending in between those colors. And there we have it. All finished our amazing spooky creepy castle on a hill so there we have our fabulous haunted house crooked house or ooky spooky house Wow hasn't it turned out fantastic well I hope you had fun creating your artwork and I would love to see what your crooked house turned out like so please take a photo and send it through so I can see your amazing creation for Halloween. Alright, well, I will see you next time. In the meantime, stay safe and keep getting creative. Bye!